What is going on everybody and welcome back. So in this one, we're gonna be working on the Corvette weather strips. So this is a huge thing on C4s. Weather strips get dry rotted and there's a lot of them because it has the removable target top. So I'm just gonna to try to give you guys my best uh, idea of, of how to do this because this is my first time doing it, but I am learning as I go. So I'll get right to it. I've already removed this rear weather strip. So obviously you gotta take the top off, which is uh, these Torx screws. Some of them still have the tools. Some of them you may have to get your own. Uh, I was using my own. I might try to get something uh, like a Torx that I can leave in the car, like a, a twist knob thing, like from uh, Harbor Freight, just to leave in the car, something convenient for me. Because um, it's nice to be able to remove the top and stash it in the back. Or if it starts to rain, you can put it on. It's a cool feature of this car, I think, because I don't really like convertibles personally, but this is like all the fun of having a convertible without actually having a convertible because you can bolt the top on and it's like a regular car again, regular coupe. So anyway, these weather strips are prone to failure. So I tore mine out and I'll show you guys. Basically you have like a channel here that the weather strip gets tucked into and weather strip adhesive is used to glue the weather strips. So what I've learned is I don't think I want to use that much. I don't anticipate having to replace these again, but if I do, Taking them out, if you run a bead on here, you're going to be in for not so much fun. Because uh, I had a tough time getting these out. I don't know if they've been done before. They didn't look that bad, but I think that they were leaking. So I'm going, or, you know, that one over there was leaking, and these are deteriorated, dry rotted. So that's kind of why I'm changing them, because they don't look very appealing. So I plan to buff the whole car out, but I'd like to change the weather strips first, and then I'll probably tape them off when I do my buffing, just because I'd like to be able to wash the car. And to wash the car, we got to have good weather strips. So that's my process, but I'm rambling now. So I scraped all this with a chisel and that was sort of my method for removal. I'll probably have to do the same thing here. So I'll show you guys, but you can tell that it's not necessarily in the best shape. I mean, it's, it's not that bad. It's still pliable and this could probably hang in there, but the corners are not so good. It's all rotted over here and you can see it just, just comes apart like Look at that. I mean, granted, it's not coming apart as easy as I thought it would. See, this this section is. But we're going to remove this section now. Um, I'm waiting on my weather strip adhesive to come in, and then we can start to glue things down. But I'll show you guys a little more of the removal on the front strip here. Um, but yeah, I just ended up using a chisel to scrape the flat section here. And I used a pick to go in the grooves over here. And you sort of scrape high, and you scrape low with the pick, and it will try to, like, it cuts all the foam and you end up getting most of it out of the channel. Um, and I just washed it afterwards to get all the dirt out of there. And I may come back and hit it again with some alcohol uh, just to clean everything out before we put the new strips in. So that's just my cleaning process. And I'll show you guys more of that on the front weather strips here. After I take, I'm going to remove, um, actually, I don't know if that needs to come off, but I do think I want to take some of this stuff off just so I can clean it and these visors too, if possible because they are kind of nasty. So try to get it to this point. You can kind of see the difference between um, this right here. I have a lot of the paint comes off too. I don't really foresee it being a problem. It is aluminum. It doesn't seem like it rusts that much. And uh, the weather strip should keep it from getting wet in there. At least that's the idea. You can see right here where I, I didn't really scrape and it kind of just looks like the glue. And then there's the pieces of weather strip. So I'm kind of just coming in here and rather aggressively, honestly. You should make sure you don't slip out of the groove. Which, you know, I've been pretty careful thus far. be semi-aggressive with it here to try to get this stuff out. So it's kind of where I get with that. And then and then I'll take this pick here and just try to I know it makes an awful noise but it's good to 
get in the groove here. And just try to, yeah, you'll, you'll know when you don't have any glue in there when it starts to move freely. So, still a lot of glue in the groove, but we're working on getting it out here. Other side too. So, definitely tiring, a lot of work. I did one removal last night and I'm doing one tonight. And I think that'll be it because I'm getting tired. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll get the whole thing torn out and then we'll go ahead and start putting the new one in as soon as my weather strip adhesive comes. And I don't think I'm gonna put a lot because these were a pain to take off. And I don't think it necessarily needs a lot because it's tucked in the groove here and here in these grooves. So you shouldn't need that much um, to hold it. So hopefully we just put, like I said, a little on each screw and in between, and uh, we should have enough weather strip adhesive. At least that's gonna be my method. So I'll get this all peeled off, and then I'll get this cleaned up like I did to the back side, and we'll be pretty much ready for our two main weather strips, at least the, the two of three main weather strips. We got the rear glass one still too. So yeah, that is where we're at. So I was able to peel the headliner off. I tried to do it without ripping anything and I think I was pretty successful. Um, you can see that the, the underlayment here is, is a little bit brittle. So I don't know if, what I'm gonna do with this. That's why it fell down I think because this stuff's so brittle. So I may try to like scrub this. I'm gonna probably peel this, this off here and try to get rid of all the crud and then just glue it to what's left. It may not be as foamy, uh, but I'll just, you know, try to re-glue it. Otherwise I could use a different backer. I'm not sure if this is gonna hang in there. I don't know what to do. We'll see. Maybe somebody's got an idea of what I could use. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of different ways that you could do this, but I just gotta make something that goes up in there and it's gotta have a curvature, it's gotta be flexible. I'm sure I could use foam, all sorts of different things. But uh, I'm gonna try to reuse this stock board here, although I did beat it up a little bit, and I'll restretch it because, you know, obviously it's all detached. So I just gotta make it so that it'll stick nicely and reattach it, and hopefully it will not fall down on my head. Um, so this thing, I've been scraping it with the scraper, the uh, trusty chisel here, which is just, it's painstaking. It's a painstaking process. You really gotta just get in the groove and get all the glue out. And somebody did this too, because there's a screw missing up top. So somebody's been in here replacing these weather strips too. Hacking it all up. So we'll see how many screws are missing on this side. This is the one side I have remaining to do that I have to scrape. Um, it's just, it's uh, not fun. So anyway, we'll hopefully be done after that. And we can move on to, uh, you know, easier things. Um, it would be nice if I... Maybe painted all this stuff here, this bare aluminum, but I don't think I'll be able to match it well. Most of it will be covered. Nobody's ever going to look up when you're in the car, so eh, I might just let it slide. But I do want to clean in here, like all these grooves. So I think what I'm going to do is get my detail brush with some soap on it, clean all the stuff out and after that, and then I'll be ready to apply these weather strips. And the point here, what you want to do is put these two weather strips on, and then while these are drying, I guess, you're going to put the ones on in the car, front and rear, and then bolt the top on and let it sit, say, overnight. Um, so that way you get all the weather strips applied, and then it sits like that, and everything can, you know, sort of sit in its final resting place. And if you have any fitment issues, tonight would be the night before it all firms up to try to fix something because the glue won't be fully set. So that is the plan. I'm going to try to put both of these weather strips on and then go ahead and do the two in the car as well because my weather strip adhesive came in and then we'll be able to hopefully install the top again tonight um, just to let everything cure up and then we'll be able to do the headliner at a later date so they're nice very rubbery the other ones were just like they were like foam so this is nice and you can see this groove here and this groove here has to correspond with the grooves that we cleaned out with our pick inside of here, this way and that way. So you kind of want to go and tuck one end in 
And this is how they go. The square edge of the top has this flap on it. So I put a little bit of weather strip adhesive here and also here. And then just I just ran a small bead with a focus on right on the screws. And uh, yeah, and that's that. So hopefully it all sticks good. I did do this side and I think I got it in there pretty good. I'll wait till tomorrow. There's an area that looks like it's bulging, but I think that's just how it sits in there because when you look at it, the weather strip kind of had a little bulge to it. So I'm hoping that it's not um, gonna be a problem. I think it's in the slot nicely. So I taped it down and I tried to put it in there as best as I could. So we'll try to put it on the car in a minute and hopefully put the windows up. I'm just gonna like place it on the car, put the windows up and hopefully they'll hold it in place and it can dry like that even though it's probably already dry. And we're, we, uh, it's looking good. I think before it was like, the window would just like go alongside it. Now it looks like, you know, the window is actually inside of this, which is kind of cool. So I don't know, I just hope that the window doesn't hit this. I don't, I don't know how that works. I shut the other window and it did not hit that. At least maybe it did and it went underneath. Not really sure how that works, but hopefully when we get it back together, it'll all be clear. I think this is probably lifted up. I may have to bend this out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it sits right up in the channel. I think it's really nice. It's going to seal nicely. So I can't wait to get the other ones in and just see what everything looks like after we get all the rest of them in, which will probably be tomorrow night. So I'll let this sit with the windows pushing up into it and that'll dry overnight. So I know that the camera battery died at some point. I did the front weather strip and then I did the rear. 
and they came out pretty good, honestly. Um, slight inconsistencies in where the windows shut, and I'm not sure if that's just due to the age. You really gotta jam these doors to get these to shut. Um, the doors don't really wanna shut otherwise, but everything fits pretty well. These new weather strips, honestly, I'm, I'm happy. Based on what it looked like before, everything was all deteriorated. These look legit, and uh, I think it's gonna seal very nicely. So we got a lot of uh, effort into putting these on, and uh, it was definitely not an easy job. The other side looks okay too. Um, I'll show you guys, but I put the top back on just to let everything uh, dry, hopefully as one. And this flap sticks up a little bit. I think it'll be okay, it looks a little bit better now, but we, we, the weather strips are so tight on this thing, you gotta push down really hard and push back to get the bolts all started. And same thing up front. So I, <laughs> I we'll see how hard it is. Got some chipping paint here. We'll see how hard it is um, to do after we get like this thing fully dried. And I don't know, maybe it'll be easier when it's in the sun and uh, you can put the top on and off. But for right now, uh, it's pretty difficult to put on and off. So I'm definitely gonna leave it on there for a little while until everything's all set up. And then I'll take it off at some point to do the headliner. But for right now, probably just gonna leave it on uh, with no headliner in there, maybe no visors. I just wanna try to get the rest of the interior back together. Uh, weather strips are on now, so that we can probably do the rear weather strip tomorrow. I'll pull this thing outside and uh, I got it, the door weather strips still to do. I'll probably save that for a separate video. Door weather strips and the uh, window scraper moldings. Uh, so big thanks to uh, Corvette America or Top Flight Automotive. They really hooked it up with these weather strips and made everything here possible. So this is where we're gonna end it for tonight. But yeah, I'm pretty happy guys. We It's big progress to have all the weather strips replaced. You know, that's huge, especially for a Corvette. That's a huge job. And we did it in a couple nights so far. Oh, we still got a few more to do, but Overall, this is big. I don't think it's gonna leak anymore because as long as it seals like this, it took some messing with the window and whatnot to get it to tuck up in here correctly. But yeah, as long as it seals like this, guys, I'm, I'm gonna be happy because I think this is gonna be pretty leak free. I did bust a tab on this side and I taped it. So hopefully everything uh, doesn't wanna come popping off. Um, we'll have to make sure that that's not gonna come flying off, so we'll have to work at that. But I'll show you guys all that stuff after this all dries. All right guys, so it dried overnight and everything looks pretty good. We had a pretty good stick in the front here. That's just the way that this thing went down. It stuck really nicely. The back seems like it didn't stick that good. It's peeling a little bit. I don't even wanna look at the other side because I know it's bad because I ripped through this thing here. I was kind of upset that I did that. But the bottom was stuck and now it's kind of coming unstuck. So I think we might need to put a little more glue in there and uh, tape him down and just try to get that to stick. Um, so I'll do that in a few minutes. But we're going to start working on the rear weather strip now. This thing is just, it's pretty bad. So it's all full of grease. Somebody greased the, I don't even know. Try to get this thing out of here without getting grease everywhere. Somebody thought that this was gonna be a good idea. I don't understand. It's all gooey. It's really nasty. <laughs> I gotta get this out of there. Uh, I don't know if that's, I don't know what it is. I don't know, it was so, there was so much in the corners here, it was not even funny. So I'm gonna get it all out of there. I'll clean all this out on my red quarter panel. And then uh, the other side too. And we'll just get everything all cleaned up and ready for the new weather strip. Uh, gotta pull it off the back there, but the rear did not leak luckily, but it'll be nice to have something that's not in multiple pieces And this definitely needs to be cleaned in here in this little area So we'll do that and I'll get back to you guys after it's all cleaned up and ready for the new strip So if anybody says that you should use some sort of grease on your weather strip underneath it to make it not leak uh, Tell them no tell them you're wrong because this has probably been the worst thing I've had to do yet, as far as weather strips go, is getting all of the grease off of here. So somebody decided to adhere the weather strip with grease. I don't know if that was after the paintwork was done 
or I'm not really sure because they use so much grease. You can see it's actually all all down in here. That's all grease. And on the other side too, there's all grease up in here. I don't need to get that. I can't get it. And it'll just stay there underneath all the trim. But they grease like the whole thing. You can see in the cracks here. I mean, there's some chip paint, but there is still grease in all the cracks where this panel was glued on. You can see the, the glue oozing out from between the red and the other color there. That's where they glued the panel on. It did a pretty decent job, honestly. Um, it looks pretty good. The other side is the factory panel. They don't have nearly as much glue, but that's okay. You know, they definitely used enough glue. So I'm not worried about that panel coming off, that's for sure. But looks like that panel might have had a little damage right here when they glued it on, that little mark there. But it's all good. Um, the bodywork, honestly, is decent on the car. I think it just, it wasn't, either it wasn't done properly uh, with the correct materials, and that's why the shrink back is messed up on the hood, uh, or just leaving these cars in the sun. I just think the bodywork doesn't really age well. Uh, but the paint is honestly good, and the paint work is pretty good. Some few spots missed here and there, but we'll see how it goes. It'll clean up nice. Anyway, back to the weather strip. Um, Want to talk about how you're going to apply your adhesive. I'm thinking um, that we're just gonna run a bead along the edge here on the outside and then push it down. I don't wanna like get all gobbed up in here. I think just on the edge will be good. And we'll try to just position it nicely and fit it over. And hopefully that'll be enough glue to uh, secure this thing because I don't want it oozing out everywhere. <laughs> and I don't want to use grease. I'm not sure why they did that. But yeah, I'm gonna unbox it now. And we are gonna have to remove these in order to get underneath there. So I'll try to get some sort of prop rod to hold the glass up while I uh, pop the rods off and get the weather strip around it. Because it is, does come in one piece. This one was in uh, numerous pieces, at least four. Um, but this new one hopefully will be all in one piece, go on and we'll lock it up tight and let it dry. And then uh, we can start reassembling the interior. I wanted to make sure it was all apart for this install. And we can uh, start putting some of the stuff together in the rear here while we wait. Because I know the rear is dry. It hasn't leaked yet. Uh, and then we just got to wait on the water test in the front. And we can start putting the front together. Uh, but the next video, I think, will be the doors. So I'll show you guys once I got this completed. And then we'll uh, proceed to the next video, I think, when we're going to do the door seals and window scrapers. Okay, so I got this thing propped open. I got both of the struts off. The glass is pretty heavy and propped open it's uh i'm just looking at how like offset those hinges are that one looks way more crooked but whatever um yeah this uh setup is very heavy so be careful when you're doing it you gotta pop the clips off of the strut here and I'm gonna be careful not to knock this thing see yeah if i make this fall this whole thing's gonna come down on my head so just trying to stabilize that and uh, you gotta pull this out here, this little clip, and don't forget to unplug it as well, and put something in there to hold it up. So I got a broom in there, and it's kinda keyed into this, which is making me a little bit more comfortable about this whole scenario. I don't want it like pu pushing on the glass in one point. So make yourself something, figure something out. It seems pretty stable, hopefully the broom doesn't fall. So I'm gonna have to, um, take the one piece weather strip and tuck it underneath the, the broom handle or wrap it around the broom handle and then go around each of the struts individually so that it is uh, in place and then I should be able to just put the struts back on while I do my work and uh, that's just you know the setup procedure we'll let it hang inside the vehicle but to get to that point you have to prop it and do it especially if you're doing it by yourself and then you can put the struts back on like I said and you don't have to worry about it as much because um, the weather strip will already be through. And we can put some glue and take our time and not worry about this falling on our head. So I ended up following the instructions here from um, Corvette America here. And what they say to do is, they say that this is a larger or longer weather strip than the factory one to prevent the corner blow that they all have. So that glue joint gets stressed um, and then the strips pop out. So kind of cool that they, uh, do that so it's really only glued in that one spot so I think I may just do a little bit of glue here and there um, but mainly you need it in the corners there but since we're gonna put it 
in the corners last, it should have low tension. That's what they're saying. So you basically want to uh, set it up so that you have your center points marked right here. And I have my center point marked up there. And then I went in the uh, inside and I set up my center points on the strip too with some tape. So as long as they stay on there, we can line up the center points and do those first. And then we'll kind of work everything into the corners. And that way we should have not that much tension. That's how they want you to do it. So I got our weather strip. Oh. Yeah, I didn't. I thought I did. Not too bright of me, but you got to put those. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> I, I hooked them up again and I didn't put it around them while I was hooking up. I was so concerned with getting the clips on. Because uh, don't take the clips off. They're hard to get on. So I guess I got to revisit that because it's not in there. <laughs> so I'll do that now and then we'll be ready. I was just going to do one at a time with my prop rod on there. Nice, be honest. I think it looks good too. So I followed the instructions, got this weather strip all smashed down. My center lines were a little off. I almost recommend just putting the corners in and then working everything else around because I've seen other people do that and that might be a better method just because it's hard to get the exact center point and then it's hard to stretch it evenly, but you want the corners in good and that's for sure. And these too, so I put a little bit of bead underneath and I'm gonna shut the latch now and not open it for a day. So that's that. Hopefully I can get the latch closed. It's definitely gonna be tricky. Let's see here. It's gonna be tight. The new weather strip. We got it. All right. That's that guys. The glass definitely sits up nice and high on that weather strip. I think it's okay. Looks a little funny honestly, but it's kind of universal on both sides. As the weather strip gets worn down more, uh, it'll probably sit lower. It's really hard to shut the glass too <laughs> in the meantime, but yeah, what, what, how often do you open the latch? Uh, hopefully it should be nicely sealed where we got a little ooze out down there. I may have to touch up our red paint because I can see a little bit of red through here. But yeah, other than that, looks pretty good guys. So we got new weather strips everywhere. Now I just gotta start working on the doors. So the driver's door's got the worst window scraper. So I'll probably do that side first. I'll try to start on that today. So I'll take a little break. But yeah, it's coming along. Almost there. I almost got the car registered today. One little hiccup at the DMV cost me the trip. <laughs> so I'll have to make another trip back. And uh, we'll do that so I can get a new or get a registration going on in this thing. I almost had the plates. She had the plates. She was ready to give them to me. And then uh, she found a problem. <laughs> so we'll get it done. Just going to have to go back in a few weeks, try to register it. And I can get this thing on the road. But thank you all for watching. And I hope you all enjoyed. I know I didn't show a lot of the crucial things, but it's, it's hard to demonstrate. I could just give you my pointers. There's plenty of videos out there of people doing... Uh, the techniques and whatnot, showing you how to get it in the grooves and showing you how to do the rear hatch. But I feel like explaining it is better than just a five minute video of somebody doing something and you don't know what they're doing. So I can give you some pointers that I, problems I ran into and things like that. So if you guys have any questions, obviously hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to help. But yeah, seems like it's pretty good. I mean, obviously the glass has some flex to it. You can see it's it's definitely beefed up on the edges here. But these weather strips got to, you know, get worked in. And uh, once they get a little broken in, it'll probably sit nicer. But you can tell before the glass used to sit higher on the other side. Now it looks a little more even. I think the strip is a little bit more uh, evened out. So, yeah. Awesome, guys. Wonderful. I'm stoked. Can't wait to uh, get to the next phase on this thing, which is likely uh, interior reassembly and buffing the paint. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.